Hi, and welcome to Arts and Crafts with Anush at the Pocosin Public Library. Today we are going to be looking at how to make one of those really pretty textile wall hangings that you're starting to see be very popular lately. And I've made one in advance to kind of show you what you can do. This one is actually about three feet long. I'll hold it up later to show you. But you can use, I've used entirely yarn with this. You can also use um, ribbons. You could use lengths of lace, um, even cloth strips I've seen people use. But the first thing you want to start with is what you're going to hang all that yarn on. In this case, I've used a dowel from the craft store that was less than a dollar. You may find something in your house to use. Leftover piece of curtain rod. It's a little thicker, so it could hold something heavier. If you went to the beach or found a really pretty piece of driftwood, you could use that as well. Those make really, really interesting holders. Although it doesn't have to be big like that, you can use a small piece as well. Um, just a branch you find in the yard if you want to try that, or bamboo, there's a lot of that around. Um, you're going to need some good sharp scissors to cut all that material, and you're going to need something to measure that material with. So I suggest a yardstick. It's a lot more um, helpful than a ruler because you're going to be cutting long lengths of yarn and you're going to want yarn and lots of it. I use about three full skeins worth, skeins of about this size. Um, and I did go to the craft store to get it because I wanted to find colors to go together and I just didn't have that much around. Um, you can raid your own stash in the closet or craft room if you like. You're going to want to look at colors that are going to go with what you want to use it for. For example, um, my house is kind of beachy, so this works perfectly. If you want to follow the colors of the room you're going to hang it in, you'll want to choose colors like that. If it's going to be a gift and plenty of time for Christmas gifts, think about what that person would like. You can make one with a good fall theme, picking up some of the beautiful pumpkin oranges and apple reds and all the, the leafy colors right now. You could make one for the holidays that uses primarily reds and greens, maybe gold, or you could use blue, silver, white, those together be very festive. Um, you could put greenery on them, in fact, if you'd like, just right along the top or even hang it, you know, attach it to the hanger, which is another thing you'll do with your yarn. Just make a, a hanger from it. It's very easy. Just tie it on the ends and the ends get hidden by the yarn that's hanging. So how do we start? Well, we need to cut some yarn and you're going to cut, want to cut a lot of it. Because I knew this would be about three feet long, that means that the pieces I cut had to be twice that length. So instead of 36 inches, 72. The easiest way to do that, I think, is to lay it against your yardstick, pulling it along here, and take that spot. And I just put the yardstick down because then it's easier to pull the yarn up, find that end point, and just snip. And here's my first loop. Um, I cut a lot of these sitting around watching TV and just put laid them over a box in front of me uh, on the coffee table as I was doing it. And then when you have lots of it together, it's helpful if you can find a table or another good flat space to lay them on, just lay chunks of them together. That way you can keep them straight so they don't tangle and get messed up. You can also keep them in color groups together and move them around however you want them to be. Um, I wasn't sure where I wanted this brown to go. I originally had it next to the center part, but then moved it. So it makes it easier to do that. Um, once you have, and you also get a, an idea of how it looks as it's coming together and what it's gonna look like when you hang it. So having done that, the next thing to do is hang them on the rod. And I'm gonna show you, this could not be easier. So you lay it over, you have the midpoint of the, 
comes with the yarn, lay it over the dowel, make a loop, reach through and grab the two ends and pull them through and pull it tight. And there you go. And you have this little piece here, which looks really interesting, or you could do it the other way and not show any of it. Just have the yarn hanging down. I did like this and you can see the effect on a finished one. It gives you another line of interest. And this could not be easier. There's no tying, no knots. And if I decide I don't like how it looks, eh, I can just pull it off or slide it off, you know, but if it's in the middle, you can just take the loop and pull. Now you saw the one piece and let me put that back just for showing a, a difference. So here's how one piece looks. You could decide that you'd like a little heftier look. And in this, I've done that in a couple of places. I'll show you closer in a minute, but cut several pieces. This is the same yarn, but I've cut about nine pieces and lay it over and make that loop. Let me make sure I'm getting it right. Reach through the loop, grab the loose pieces, just like I did the the single and I'm just trying to get them all through there there we go so now all the way through oh, don't turn it around really do like how this looks better sitting out it just gives a little something so this is much thicker and just really interesting looking like that and next to other pieces that are smaller it just gives a little something so something to think about. Um, on this one, there are a few places where I have the thicker, I have it looped together. There are three pieces in this chunk that I've put together. And it is right next to others that have just single bits. So it gives it a little difference along the way. Um, this is a slightly thicker yarn and I put three on it and then went through and braided it. And when you get to the end of the braid, oh, it's a little further, um, you can use another piece of yarn to tie it off. And it gives it a, a nice look too to have these little tied pieces. You can also see some wall hangings with those ties done along the way. Like you could have it here, you know, in several places on one as it goes down just for something different and really just use your imagination is the limit that's it um, since this is textiles wall hanging wanted to show you that you can also use ribbons let me try that on here and it works just the same make the loop reach through pull the pieces down and tighten it up. Um, you can use lengths of lace, um, even strips of fabric to do that. And um, once you've got it finished, then that's when you'll do this. At the bottom, let me just show you. Let's see, can I get to the bottom? I'm gonna have to do it here. <laughs> well, it's about the same length all the way along. You can make cuts to bring it to a V if you'd rather do that. Um, I've seen them asymmetric. This I thought looked best just straight as it was, but again, it's up to your imagination. And in addition to braiding, if you want, if you would like to macrame pieces, you can do that. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this. It was fun for me. I hope you have fun making your own wall hanging.